The initial step to fabricating a heat exchanger is patterning a silicon wafer. A silicon wafer with 2 micrometer thick oxide layer is taken and cleaned with acetone and isopropyl alcohol. A quick dump rinse washes away the alcohol and any other contaminants on the surface of the wafer. The wafer is then dried using a spin rinse dryer rotating at 2200 RPM. The next step is to spin coat one micrometer thick photoresist on the surface of the wafer. A mask containing fine features of the heat exchanger is loaded into a mask liner. The soft baked silicon wafer is loaded and exposed to ultraviolet radiation for 7 seconds. The wafer is then developed, spin rinse dried, and ready to be processed. The pattern silicon wafer is placed in a buffered oxide etch solution in order to etch the exposed oxide layer. The wafer is then rinsed in and washed thoroughly with deionized water. The next step is to permanently transfer the microchannel patterns into the silicon wafer. This is achieved using a potassium hydroxide etchant. A Teflon coating is applied to the non-device side of the silicon wafer in order to prevent lap phase etching of the wafer when placed in the KOH etchant. Next, the wafer is mounted on a Teflon frame that holds it at an angle during the etching process. This frame also ensures a safe handling of the sample wafer in a highly corrosive etching solution. The frame containing the wafer is finally placed in the etchant. This etches the silicon wafer, leading to the formation of microchannels with a trapezoidal cross section. After rinsing the wafer in DI water, the oxide layer is stripped off using BOE. The next step is to bond the wafer to a glass substrate, enclosing the etched microchannels. An anodic bonding setup is designed for this purpose. After dicing the silicon wafer to appropriate size, it was placed over a hot plate with the glass substrate over it. An aluminum block was placed on top of the glass silicon stack. It can be used as an electrode for the anodic bonding process, in addition to applying pressure to the stack while bonding. The bonding process is initiated by applying 780 volts between the top and bottom electrodes. The initial step involved in the synthesis of nanofluids is to mix the particles in DI water. In this experiment, aluminum oxide nanoparticles approximately 100 nanometers in diameter are mixed in DI water. 10 grams of the nanoparticles are weighed on a highly precise weighing station and are mixed in 990 grams of DI water. The whole mixture is ultrasonicated for two hours in order to prevent the aggregation as well as to ensure proper mixing of the particles in water. As you can see, the heat exchanger is enclosed in a chamber made of plexiglass. 
This chamber is made up of an upper and lower plate. The lower plate has a cavity in which there are four seats over which the heat exchanger is placed. This is to prevent any heat conduction to the test bench. Enclosing the heat exchanger in this plexiglass structure has an additional advantage of preventing heat loss through convection. The test bench consists of a reflex condenser containing the nanofluid. The condenser is kept on top of a hot plate and the temperature of the nanofluid is maintained at 90 degrees Celsius using a feedback circuit consisting of a temperature probe. The mixture is continuously agitated using a magnetic stirrer. This helps in preventing the sedimentation of nanoparticles as well as to maintain a uniform temperature distribution in the fluid. The reason for using a reflex condenser is to maintain the concentration of the nanofluid at a constant value. This is achieved by condensing the evaporated water by passing cold water through a chamber on the condenser lid. A peristaltic pump is used to pump the hot nanofluid through the hot fluid channel of the heat exchanger at a specific flow rate. It is collected in a small beaker at the outlet. We validate the flow rate of the hot nanofluid by measuring its weight for a specified interval before taking the measurements. The flow rate thus obtained is programmed into the syringe pump that holds the cold fluid. The nanofluid from the syringe pump is introduced into the cold channel of the heat exchanger through an ice bath. The temperature of the cold fluid is maintained at around 10 degrees Celsius at the inlet of the cold channel. The temperature at both the inlets and the outlets of the heat exchanger is measured using thermocouples connected to a data acquisition system, which is interfaced to a computer. A sample rate of one sample per second is maintained throughout the experiment.